the end. We gonna give you a chance. Although I wanted to give her a chance now so I could catch my breath. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh yes. So for the first sermonette this morning, my message is based on the text from Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Amen? So according to the word of God, Jesus gives us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And when someone gives you something great that you didn't necessarily ask for, it's considered a gift. Sometimes the gift is unexpected, and we say, aw, you shouldn't have. And then other times, we get that little goofy, is that for me? kind of look, and then we start cheesing with the big goofy Kool-Aid smile. However it goes down, when we get gifts, it makes us feel good. Gifts often come in nice packages that don't really reveal what they are at first, so it increases the wonder, excitement, and anticipation. And other times, we get gifts that we don't necessarily comprehend how amazing they truly are until we have had them in our presence for a little while. So two and a half years ago, when Reverend Leonard announced his retirement after 26 wonderful years, we had no idea who would be our next pastor. But we soon were introduced to Reverend Lisa Williams, gifted to us by God. So as a title for today, we want you to know that your presence is our gift. Let us pray. Oh Lord, Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, descend upon me right now, Lord God, that I may decrease and you increase in me, Lord God, that you give me power and authority to deliver a message to your people that honors your name and gives honor to our great pastor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I just want you all to know in advance that I'm going to need a little interaction in the house today. So if I ask a question, I'm going to need y'all to respond, maybe a yes, an amen, clap your hands, stomp your feet, anything to indicate that you're listening and that you're following along with me, all right? All right, all right. So now let's, let's break that text down. So let's kind of understand some of the vocabulary that we've got going on in verse 11. So it says, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teacher. So a prophet is a person chosen to speak for God. And then we have an apostle who is a messenger or one who is sent. And then we have an evangelist who is a person who seeks to convert others to Christian faith, especially by public preaching. And then we have a pastor who is a minister in charge of a church or a congregation to provide spiritual leadership to the members of the church. And then we have teacher a person who instructs students to acquire knowledge, competence, or virtue. So we all know that God is not a man that he would lie, right? Amen. So we know that the word of God in, chapter, in verse 11 is correct when he says he gave us all, and I'm emphasizing all of these, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. Somebody say Christ gave us all. Okay, yes, we got all, y'all. Each of those individuals has a specific gift that God has purposed them to carry out. But when he gifted us with our pastor, we didn't just get an apostle or just a prophet or just an evangelist or just a pastor or just a teacher. We got them all rolled into one. Amen? Amen. Reverend Lisa has displayed each of these attributes to us. So therefore, we know that we know that we know that we have been blessed with a great gift from God himself. Amen. And we have all heard the phrase that the gift that keeps on giving. Right. 
So now we have gotten this gift of this amazing pastor who possesses all of these abilities packaged up just for us here at Bethel to talk it. So how does this gift operate to bless us over and over again? We saw it a little bit earlier because she had the day off, but she came up here and she she was blessing us, right? So we saw it. But let's go to chat to verse 12 to check this out. So it reads that Christ has given us these gifted individuals to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Reverend Lisa's duties as a pastor include preparing weekly sermons, preaching and conducting worship services, teaching Bible study lessons, but she makes sure to connect all of these messages together so that we are getting a consistent teaching in service, Bible study, and Sunday school. This method helps the word of God to take root within us, therefore carrying out the purpose of his word to equip and build us up. Another component of how she works to equip the congregation is that she carries the responsibility of interpreting biblical scripture for the congregation and instructing us about what God is trying to impart through his word. In doing so, she brings real life experiences in a down to earth style. So to help us apply the words of God to our lives today. And as an example, she takes me out every single time she utters, Bill Collector at my door. <laughs> and if you don't know, that is a classic line, keeping it real from the 1986 song, Ain't Nothing Going On But The Rent. But it provides us with an identifiable, relatable way to comprehend the word of God and make it resonate within us. So the gift that we have been giving, given continues to keep giving by giving us content, context, comprehension, co consistently and constantly. We all know that God loves a cheerful giver, so we are further blessed because she gives to us gladly by eagerly sharing God's word. I'm almost done, y'all. Reverend Lisa's work as a pastor has demonstrated her desire to help this congregation reach next level. The next level is described in verse 13, where it says, reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. She does this by encouraging us to be empowered by the word of God. She challenges us to know that we are in Christ and that we have authority as heirs of God the Father. Reverend Lisa works to align our church to be all that God intends it to be. The people of God together, fully alive and flourishing. So she is invested to make sure that we are all studying together, praying together, and developing our own individual relationships with God to be the kind of church that will both proclaim and embody the gospel. The leadership of our pastor puts us, the body, as the text reads, on a path to reach the, full, the fullness of Christ. Reverend Lisa makes this investment in our congregation day in and day out. She invests in our congregation, but yet technically she doesn't own us, but she still takes responsibility for our spiritual growth and maturity. That is so big. So imagine you don't own a house, but you are responsible for it. She has been putting food on the table to make sure that we are being fed the word of God. She's got the phone line connected and makes herself available for prayer whenever someone from the congregation needs it. And she makes sure the living word of God is constantly flowing water in our souls. To whom much is given, much is required. Not only is Reverend Lisa responsible to keep the lights on for us, she has to be the light of God. She has been called to be a pastor. And as it says in Titus 1, 7, a pastor must be humble, not arrogant. A pastor must constantly demonstrate the gospel by admitting when she or he is wrong and assuming responsibility and restoring relationships. A pastor has to be holy. She has to devote her life to Jesus. A pastor must be able to teach. I can go on and on. A pastor must be spiritually mature. A pastor must be respectable. So guess what, y'all? 
everybody can't be a pastor because they don't meet the qualifications. So I just want to confirm that we all know that God does everything in order with a purpose and a plan, correct? Amen. So if we know that, we are all aware that Reverend Lisa did not become our pastor on accident or just because, correct? And we all should have learned from our ser- from her sermons over the past few weeks that God chooses us, right? And so from there, we know that he may have used the New York Annual Conference as the vessel to get her here, but he had a plan and a purpose for Bethel to talk it. He chose Reverend Lisa Williams to be steward and manager of his resources and his flock in this little vineyard on the corner of Christian and Locust. God always knows what he's doing. He has a plan for his people here at Bethel to talk it to be on one accord. And he knew who he could put in place to accomplish this, uniting this congregation in his truth, the Reverend Lisa Williams. So he blessed us with you and your presence is our gift. Amen. shelter he's my guide and he's with me all the time i don't worry i don't fret because god has never left me yet and i'll keep on trusting his word is true he's already done what he said he would do i'll just have to keep that track going in my mind On uh, 
Thursday night when Brother Manning asked me to be the third speaker, my inclination was to decline, but I was immediately reminded that God has never failed to provide me with an idea when I needed one. And by the end of our choir rehearsal, there was a faint hint of an idea. And by Thursday morning's corporate pr prayer circle, I had all I needed to start running. And that idea was to sing. The uh, focal verse for that I was given is from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 11. And it reads, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. And so I want to acknowledge that scripture and I'll have another one to share with you. But the focal verse is that we are to remember our leaders who have spoken the word of God to us. And so I thank God for his idea and for what I'm about to say and to sing. And I hope that you all will enjoy, uh, uh, I hope that you all will join me. Every Thursday morning at 6.30, Reverend Williams hosts a prayer circle open to the congregation. Thursday morning's prayer circle was particularly powerful. Reverend Williams, as you know, prays with power as you have heard her do so many times. In morning service, but Thursday morning prayer is different in that you can bring a request or a petition for yourself, for your family, somebody you don't know personally, but may have seen on the news or read about in the paper. And Reverend Williams will pray specifically for whatever you are requesting, and she will pr pray with power for your concern. She reminded us on Thursday that when we see anxiety and fear-producing events in the news, we are not just spectators. We have power and must remember that the Holy Spirit resides in each one of us. And because of that, we can use that authority given to us to speak a word and pray for the world. It's still God's world. We can pray and then wait to see the salvation of the Lord. When the storms of life are raging, Stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, thou who rules the wind and water, stand by me. So set your phone, your clock, or your watch for 6.23 a.m. on Thursday mornings. That will give you enough time to take care of your personal needs before calling in. <laughs> Reverend Williams prays for individuals. She prays for our country and for our government. Whatever your concern, bring it, and she will pray with power. I know that Reverend Williams is a woman of deep faith and is rooted and grounded in what she preaches. Among the things we have heard her proclaim is that the Holy Spirit lives in us, and if we believe in Jesus Christ and confess him as Lord, then we have authority. As a matter of fact, last Sunday she had an envelope full of blessings, attributes, and promises which are ours in Christ and that are, that are ours as followers of Jesus Christ who shed his blood for us. And remember that his blood was represented by the back of the, her envelope. <laughs> Authority, joy, and peace, guidance, protection, strength in the Holy Spirit are just a few of the attributes and promises that we have. We have just completed a study of the book of Romans in which Paul tells the Jews and Gentiles that they must have faith. 
The Bible mentions that word, faith, 236 times, including 40 times in the book of Romans and eight times in the book of Ephesians. This has been the ongoing message and reminders of both Reverend Williams and Reverend Leonard that we must have faith and trust. And that charge is reinforced in countless songs and hymns. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die. Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know if thou withdraw thy hand from me, oh, whither shall I go? In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18 to 20, Paul tells the Ephesians and us that we must be, quote, filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This message has been proclaimed to us in word and in song many times, and especially in the hymns that we have sung and forgotten. Singing enables us to encourage ourselves, so sing. Sing a song of thanksgiving. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Oh, you brought me. Yes, you brought me from a mighty long way, a mighty long way. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Oh, you brought me from a mighty a mighty long way. I know that in addition to the rhythm and beat of a song, Reverend Williams believes that the message of the song may be more important than these. So sing a song of confirmation. I remember someone telling me that when he was in trouble, he remembered a song sung in this church when he was a child. And that song came back to him when he was in one of his darkest times to give him encouragement. I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see, and this is the dearest, that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. And another song of confirmation. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All 
other ground is sinking sand. Another song of confirmation. Yes, God is real. He's real in my soul. Yes, God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. Yes, God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Some of the hymns that we have sung are confessions and prayers to God. I am weak, and I need thy strength and power to help me in my weakest hour. Let me through the darkness thy face to see. Lead me, O oh Lord, lead me. Lead me, guide me along the way for if you lead me i cannot stray lord let me walk each day with me lead me O lord lead me and other hymns that we have sung are declarations. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. And this last song of declaration. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And so as we continue to have Reverend Williams speak the word to us with power, remember that we can encourage ourselves. You can encourage yourself with a song. And as Reverend Leonard had told us many times, also find a scripture that you can stand on when times get rough. I thank you. And I thank you, Reverend Williams. Well, Brother Jesse, we'll come and give a final celebration. Thank you, Brother Ron. My brothers and sisters, I come to you in this quick short time to bring you from Colossians chapter 1, verses 28 and 29. The scripture says, he is the one we, we preach, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. And our focal verse is going to be part B of verse 28. 
which says, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. I want to talk to you about a pastor's heart. The desire of a pastor's heart. Let us pray. Father, as I bring this word to you, Father, may only you, Lord, speak through me, Father, that you may be glorified. Allow us, Father, to receive these words, Father, that truly your may build the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Over the years of my spiritual journey, I've had the opportunity to speak to many different pastors, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Methodist. I've even had the opportunity to speak to Greek Orthodox, Amy Zion, Baptist, Full Gospel, Pentecostal, and of course, AME. What is the desire of their hearts? That you become spiritually mature in Christ. You become spiritually mature in Christ. So far, we've heard a lot of great things about the pastor doing, but now it's time for you. Let us have a chat for a few minutes about some assumptions about being spiritually mature. We have the assumption of the church. We have the assumption of religion. We have the assumption of spirituality. Let's talk about the assumption of the church. Some churches, when you're fully saved, give you a Bible and set you adrift in the sea of 6640. Does anybody know what 6640 is? 6640 is the Bible. 66 books and 40 authors. And they set you adrift and there's no plan, no study, no accountability, no one to answer your questions. Not in this church. Amen? Not in this church. There is Bible study on Wednesday. You have Sunday school on Sunday, right? And the word of God is being preached in the pulpit. You have the opportunity to avail yourself to the word of God, which grows you spiritually mature. What is the assumption of religion? Oh, well, my uh, grandmother and grandfather went to this church, and my aunt and uncle go to this church, and my mother and father go to this church, and my brothers and sisters go to this church, and my cousins go to this church. So it just spiritually confirmed upon me that I have all wisdom and understanding of the word of God. So I don't need to study it. I just got to carry it with me and bring it into church and look like I study. That is an assumption. That is, well, that's a lie from the pit of hell. But let's talk about the assumption of the spirituality, the four holies. There's nothing wrong with them. We have the saint that says, well, I go to church every Sunday. And I hear the word of God, and I am so moved. There's nothing wrong with that. I tithe. I'm giving to the church and the work of God. Amen. I pray. Yes, 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 I pray. With my brothers and my sisters, with my pastor, and with others. And then, yes. I serve. I have spiritual gifts and God has blessed me and I serve to build the kingdom of God. But that's not spiritual maturity. Let's talk about spiritual maturity. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What does the Bible say? Study to show thyself approved. You don't want to get to heaven and have God say to you, uh, what have you done with the word of God? And why would God say that to you? The reason God says that to you because it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was, and the word, it, and the word is God. 
If you don't like your Bible, you don't like God. So what are you doing with the Bible? Is it sitting on your breakfast table or under your bed or on your dresser, ignoring it? You're ignoring God. Something for you to think about. Something for you to think about. We're still talking about the pastor's desire, pastor's heart, that you grow spiritually mature. How do we get to this road of being spiritually mature? Three things. Discipline. Desire. Delight. Say that with me. Discipline. Desire. Delight. In these few minutes, let's talk quickly and talk about discipline. Barnard Group, Harvard, Princeton, all about studying 30 days. 30 days. Grab a chapter, a verse, read it every day for 30 days. The word of God is alive. It is sharper and powerful than any two-edged sword, piercing, dividing a soul and sunder, joints and marrow, thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly and perfectly furnished unto all good works. What is the Bible saying? Tells you what is right. Tells you what not is right. Tells you how to get it right and how to stay right. The word of God. Talking about being spiritually mature. Also talking about a pastor's desire for you to grow in the word of God. God. Amen. Amen. This discipline. It is for all of us. Sometimes it becomes difficult. But don't shy away from it because out of this discipline comes desire. To desire the word of God is when you can turn off that baseball game and cut off that music and decide not to call that friend and to put the food aside and to open up the word of God and sit down and have some time with the Lord. The desire of the word grows in you when you become the discipline. And then from that discipline comes delight. How do I know when delight comes? When the things that you used to do that weren't pleasing the Lord aren't a part of your life anymore and you see the change in your life. This is the power of the word of God. This is the power that is available to you. Discipline. Desire. Delight is available for you if you choose to study the word of God. I have decided to follow Jesus, right? I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. I have a precious book. It's the word of God. And it's the only book that God has given. And as I read, God speaks to me and I see Christ and Calvary. It's the wonderful word of God. It is, as Pam said, a present. How can you have a present sitting on your table that you have never opened? We also had a chance to hear about trust and obey, for there is no other way from our sister Cynthia. And now finally, my brothers and sisters, I challenge you to break off the carnality of I don't want to and step into the reality of what God has for you in his word. I thank you for this short time to talk to you about the desire of the pastor. You want to excite the pastor? You want to get her blood running? You want to see things happen in her gifts? As it says here in the, in the scripture, when you spiritually mature, it says that she strenuously contends with all the power given to her in Christ to see that you become the mighty children of God. Amen? Amen, amen and amen.
my brothers and sisters, if there is one of you who have not been on this spiritual journey, we offer you Christ. We offer him to you as the beginning of your spiritual journey. I ask you to consider that. Ask Jesus to come into your heart. Forgive me of all my sins. I place my trust in you. For Lord, there is no other God that I know. Allow you, Lord, to become leader of my life. And if you choose to do this, you are on the journey to spiritual maturity. And in the spiritual maturity, there is discipline, there is desire, and there is delight. Amen. 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 Brother Jeffrey, thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. I am so thankful and so blessed to have been planted here where I already told you it was fertile ground from the many years that Reverend Leonard was here. Um, But I thank God for you all. I thank God for the worship this morning. Amen. And I thank you, uh, Reverend. Everybody's a Reverend today. (laughs) Sister Cynthia said that I like the lyrics to the song. It's not about just the beat. And if you heard, I hope you take home with you this that that, that, that I plead the blood. You, you know you're already in a spiritual war. Once you receive Jesus, you already signed up. You're in the Lord's army. But you've got a powerful weapon. Besides the armor, you can plead the blood, and that got to shut everything down. So don't let the devil try to tempt your family, your finances, your nothing. When you could plead the blood, amen? Amen. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. You know why I get excited by those songs? Now, if you just heard the song, you might think, oh, you're trying to claim blessings. No, that's the word of God that said, I am blessed in the city and I'm blessed. There's nowhere I can go that I'm not blessed. Why? Because we carry the very presence of the living God in these earthen vessels. So I get excited about that. I get excited when people can repeat to me things that I have preached because I don't preach my word. It's God's word. And so when God's word gets down on the inside. And so, yes, my heart is that we grow in God. I I told somebody one of my gifts that God called me is to mature the saints through the word of God. And so, yes, you want to, you know, I I thank him for that. He got to, um, it might have been tight, but it was right. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) I used to tell my kids all the time, you want to give me something for Mother's Day? Just learn how to act right, okay? Just do the things that I've taught you to do on Mother's Day. You don't have to go out and buy something. And so, yes, when we show up in Bible study, when we learn the Word of God and why, it's not because we want to get an A in something or show up and just be seen. But God's Word, there's so much in it for your life to be better, for you to have more joy. And it's when you know who you are in the kingdom of God that even though we hear there's wars and rumors of wars and even though we all have something that might go on here or there, you're able to stand because you know what God has already spoken over your life and everyone connected to you. So, yes, the word of God that's living and alive, we need to study it for ourselves so that we could walk with it, so that we could receive all the things that God has for us on this side of glory, as well as wait with expectancy for that that we will receive when we enter into the kingdom of God in the heavenlies. Because if you know your word, you'll know that everywhere your feet are, you're already in the kingdom of God if you're saved. To God be the I could go on and on, but I know. First and foremost, I have to say, I don't want to keep y'all from 
You don't know Brother Lewis is a uh, a uh, a uh, gelato uh 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 master. Thank you for the word. And let me tell you, he brought his gelato here. And so I can't keep y'all from it because I can't keep myself from it. He has one flavor. I'm just going to spill the beans. Pina colada. Now, don't y'all go running out and filling up because I got to make sure I have some. Some for now and some for later. <laughs> so let us close. Again, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. I appreciate your receptivity to me. I appreciate your love that comes only from God. I appreciate those that, and I just want to make one correction. That prayer line is open to anybody. You don't have to be a member. Just dial in. Do you know that part of the power of being in God, that he hears your prayers and he will answer them? So why aren't we using this great resource to loose things in our lives that are needed? And where two or three are gathered together on one accord. It just makes your prayer as if you're talking through a megaphone in the kingdom to have those things unleashed. Amen. It's not that you can't pray alone. You ought to pray alone because if you only pray Thursday mornings, then, 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 then. I heard it this morning. If you only get the word of God once a week, you only worship once a week, then your worship is weak. W-E-A-K. Understand me? Because if you only do it when you come in here on Sundays, then your worship your rel- is weak. And so we wonder why sometimes we feel broke down because we're not doing what God's told us to do to have all power and strength. Amen. So I won't go on. But from the bottom of my heart, I thank you all. I truly thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for how you for who you are, for who you are in God. And that's what I wanted to do. Thank you, God. You thought I was done, but I'm not. (laughs) The song you all spoke about stirring up the gifts. Because this is the season. We see what's happening. God wants to stir up. He's already placed gifts in each of us. He wants us to stir them up so that we can utilize it. Amen. And walk in our purpose for his glory. Amen. 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 Amen.